Hey guys, welcome back to the biggest agricultural platform in Namibia known as Nduna Wengombe, which means headman of cattle. My name, of course, Mitchell Mutumba Simata, aka the headman of cattle. So today I'd love to talk about selecting the best bull for the best bull for beef. I think I did a number of videos talking about selecting bulls, what to look for. I think there were a couple which I will link to this video so you guys can find it. But this was a this was a request by a friend of mine, Mr. Sahil Artwork, the guy who is behind the redesign of the Nduna Ngombe logo. He asked me to do this, so I had to do research, and I found an article on Farmers Weekly. I don't know how old this article is. Maybe it's a new article or it's an old article, but it's from one of my favorite agricultural magazines that I always utilize to do referencing too. So let's get into the information. As you know, I'm not writing so, but before we get to that, I just want to say thank you very much, guys, for the support. I don't know what I'll do without you guys. Currently, right now, the channel is about 1.448,000 views, 1,000 subscribers. The watch hours are going up. And I just want to keep on reminding you guys to keep on watching, keep on hitting that like button, keep on hitting the subscription button and turning on the bell notification for future uploads so I can continue doing such videos where you guys get educational information to just help you navigate the farming, uh, the farming waters because they are very dark, they are very murky, they're very cold. But without wasting any time, let's get into this video. Choosing the right bull is key to improving a beef herd. If you buy a registered bull from a reputable breeder, you can be assured that it has been selected on performance, including genetic ability to efficient, efficiently converting feed to beef. However, its performance will always depend on other factors, including the farming system and environment. Each bull has its own genetic characteristics or traits to consider. Adaptability, which is the first one. The bull must be adapted must be adapted to its environment and production system. For example, in an area with a tick problem, a bull with a thick skin and tick, and, and tick tolerant will perform better. Growth potential. This is highly inheritable trait that, re that reacts quickly to the selective breeding. In technical terms, it is up to 55% of the 55% inheritable. Inheritability is the measurement of how easy and quickly a trait is passed from one par from parent to offspring. Feed conversion. The feed conversion ratio FCR trait is passed on more slowly. Its inher it, its inheritability is 30% but it is economically more important than the growth potential. The FCR is the ratio between the amount in kilograms of food eaten to the amount also in kilograms of beef produced. The lower the FCR, the, great, the greater the feed conver uh, conversion efficiency. Calving is the bulls genetically, the bulls, the bulls genetically influence the calving ease of, it, of his daughters. Their potential calving ease is, is reflected in the birth weight and calving ease records of his female uh, ancestors. Ask the bull breeder you're buying from how to use these breeding values to select a good bull. Frame. The frame shape and size is highly inheritable. And lean, leanness traits will will differ from breed to breed match the bull's frame size to that of the cows to that of the cow fed to produce offsprings that will suit the market needs a large frame type generally matures more slowly and needs more food be aware too of the quality of the carcass and the cutability the percentage and proportion of boneless trims sellable cuts of beef it provides if there is too much fat it is poorly distributed in the carcass this will affect the cutability reproduction a bull's scrotum size and shape reflects its fertility and rep in reproduction potential there are four basic shapes the bottleneck shape scrotum is normal Bulls with long, flat, 
sided testers see a less uh, fertile daughters. So let me repeat that. Bulls with long, flat sided testers see a less fertile daughters, while wedged shaped testers, smaller and less mobility than the average, mean impaired semen quality. Hydroplastic testers are underdeveloped. One or both testers may be affected and should also be avoided. Quality and quantity of semen. Improve quality and quantity of semen improve if the circumference of the scrotum is 38 centimeters or more. In tests, in tests only 30% of bulls with a scrotum circumference below 32 had had good quality semen, while 80%, 88% of bulls with a scrotum circumference of above 38 uh, centimeters had good quality semen. Scrotal, scrotum circumference is a uh, highly heritable. So a bull with a good scrotum circumference will produce fertile sons and daughters. The ideal scrotum size may differ between breeds. For example, in Brahman, in Brahman bulls with strong, in bulls with strong Brahman influence, the minimum circumference may be between 8 uh, centimeters, not Celsius. Visual appraisal. A bull carrying a lot of fat Carrying a lot of fat should be avoided, as it lacks the stamina of felled of being felled of being of being raised on the field, and fat deposition may reduce its fertility. When selecting, study the overall appearance of a bull, starting at the ground, moving upwards. Inspect the bull's feet, toes, heels, feet, toes, heels, knees, hooks, and shelf and scrotums. Study his movement carefully. He must move freely and strike the ground evenly with each hoof. This exercise will also give you an opportunity to evaluate the bull's deposition and see if he is easy to work with. Experience. Selecting a young bull becomes easy with experience. You will learn more quickly with a mentor or a breeder who is willing to spend time with you. Remember, remember though that a bull's potential attribution in a herd is meaningless if he is not structurally sound and physically fit to seek out cows on heat and service them. The source is from the Beef Cattle Management ARC Animal Production Institution. Ms. Irene, the SA Start Book and Livestock Improvement Association. These are the people that gave us the information. As the information is from Farmers Weekly, those are things that you need to pay attention to. So you guys can have a, a list what I said and then see what the animal judges are looking at, which is a video that I got from, I think, Fear Plus. Fear Plus is a um, YouTube channel. But with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say once again, uh, thank you for the support. Thank you for the love. I feel it in the subscriptions and the views that are going up. And I just want to remind those non-subscribers that are watching my videos and watching my channel, can you please hit that subscription button and turn on the bell notification to be notified of future uploads and hit that like button. If you don't, okay, if you're not going to subscribe, at least like my videos. Because sometimes when I go look at the amount of people, who my subscribe people that watch my videos, it's quite small. But the amount of non-subscribed videos is massive. And I'm just sitting there and saying, guys, it's just a simple click. Click, click, click on the subscribe button. And then from there on, you become part of the family. Let's grow this channel for a point whereby it's so big and start visiting farms and talking to inspectors, busy showing you what they're talking about when they're selecting bulls. The hooves are well formed over there um, and those hooves and uh, those legs move well into the, uh, into the shoulders. Uh, the animal isn't overly developed in the shoulders, which is very, very important because you must remember that a bull with overdeveloped shoulders may give calving problems um, in an animal that uh, that has a small or a narrow, narrow pin bones. But if we have a look at this bull over here, he shows us very good strength through the neck also. And one thing we will see when we look at this bull from the side view, we will see that excellent uh, coloration of, uh, of the neck. And you will see a slight coloration over here on the bottom of the barrel going uh, going back, which we all know is 
uh, is a symbol of masculinity in bulls. And that's what we want to see. We want to see masculinity in bulls. If you look at this bull and compare it to the cow, you just see the big difference between the head. A bull must look at you as if he owes you as, as if you owe him money. At the end of the day, this bull shows us that width. There might be one or two people who might like to see a little bit more development in the eyebrows of this bull, maybe. But at the end of the day, this bull still shows us very, very good masculinity. Moving now to the side of this bull. <clears throat> We see the masculinity, the muscle development in the neck over here. And remember I spoke about, um, about uh, muscle development. If we have a look at this bull over here, on the forearm and over here, we see that this development over here stands out more than we saw on the cow. In other words, this is muscle. And this is one of the places we always see muscle on a bull uh, because there is no fat covering this muscle over here. If we have a look, the loins over here are strong, they're very, very well developed. This eye muscle over here, which is what we have when you uh, have a T-bone, that runs over here, and then we have the rump over here, which is exceptionally well developed over here, and we'll see how the muscling of this bull comes down over here um, at the end, at the back end of this animal. Looking at the, the testes over there, the testes are well developed. Um, they aren't hanging too low, which is also very, very good because uh, sometimes bulls' testes hang very, very low indeed. Um, yes, I can see that on a hot day they might hang a bit lower for cooling, but sometimes those testes just hang a bit low and that can be a problem when they're walking large distances and things like that. But this bull shows us um, an exceptionally um, well-formed testes over here. They are straight. Um, capacity is uh, satisfactory to my uh, to my eye, but remembering I haven't measured them. And we like to have a good capacity in those testes because it's been proved that they also have an effect on um, on heifer longevity, uh, carving, ease, etc., etc. If we have moved back over here and we look at this bull over here, we can see. You want to go forward a bit there, please. You can go forward a bit, please. If you can come at the, come behind there, there we go, that's fine, that's 100. <clears throat> we can look at the, the back end of this, uh, of this bull, how well this bull is developed on the outside thighs over here. It is very, very round, it shows us very, very good capacity on the outside thighs over here and is well filled between the inside thighs. We don't want to see a big V bulge over here, that of course is also all beat. Sometimes we have an animal that actually has comes has a very very well developed thigh over here, a very very well developed bulge over here, but it ends very high up. This bull brings its meat down well down towards its hocks. It's also been proved that those that have what they sometimes call an apple boat, apple rump, uh, actually do not show or do not have as much meat as a bull where, which uh, brings that meat down closer to the rump, uh, sorry, closer to the hocks over here. When we look at the way this bull stand, uh, stands, he stands four square on his, uh, on his feet over here. Um, and at the end of the day, this bull shows us good bone without being too heavy in the bone. That's what we like. We don't want a bull that actually has uh, too fine a bone. We'd like to see uh, the bone development commensurate with the rest of this bull. If you have a look at this bull, right from the front to the back, is a slightly smaller, rounder bull with very, very good capacity and very good width. And that's exactly what we like to see in a